Hi, we'll be getting ready to start in just a little under 15 minutes. Uh, this is our Finer Works uh, chat, live chats that we have um, the first Tuesday of the month. And for those of you joining us on YouTube, uh, if you're watching live, you can use that, uh, just kind of click your window open and hit the live chat feature right there. And uh, we can go ahead and you can ask your questions there and we'll pass those along or I'll answer them directly. And uh, making sure our audio is coming through. Sounds like it is. Um, we can't wait to share uh, some of these. And we hope a lot of you will share some of uh, the experiences you've had in, fourth, in previous fourth quarters, because some of you have some really excellent sales. Um, so if you want to pass on that knowledge, that would be great. But we'll be starting in a few minutes. And uh, if you're watching this on the replay, uh, just go down to the description and there will be a start with a timestamp so you can click it and get past the 15 minutes of um, setup. OK, so we're glad to have you here. We'll get back on here in a few minutes. OK. Hey, Melissa. Hey, James. Do you, okay. do you have the YouTube link? Yeah, I sent that to you. Okay. Uh, you cannot go through yet. When did you send it? Mm, about, about five minutes ago. Hmm. Let me just double check that it went through. Oh, mm, yeah, here it is. Okay. okay. Uh,
Okay. Well, that, I'm going to, can I go ahead and start letting people in? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and I'll, I'll be right back. All right. And Kathy, welcome. See you joining us on Zoom. Let me uh, share my screen. So, hi, Kathy, welcome. Thanks. We'll get started in just a few minutes. So, uh, we'll let people get in. We'll start in about five minutes. So, Feel free to get your drinks or whatever you need, your pens. <laughs> Let me see, I'm gonna share my screen just so. There we go. And then if y'all want, for those of y'all joining on Zoom, if you all wanna hit your mute button until you're ready to ask a question just so that, um, when James is speaking, nothing is coming uh, over him. Thank you. And um, for those of you joining us on the live chat on YouTube, if you have any questions, just put them in that live chat comment thing right there. You can ask those. I'm, I'm monitoring those. I'll ask James or, you know, if it's a question meant for me, I'll answer that as well. And anybody watching this on YouTube on the playback, remember to go to the description and I'll have the start time in the description so that you can kind of skip over this uh, 15 minutes setup. But we will be starting in about four minutes. And if you'd like to, uh, join on Zoom, you can. You just go into your Final Works account and get to your dashboard. Um, I'm just clicking up here, once you're logged in, go to your account dashboard and there'll be the link and stuff to your to the Zoom meeting. Make sure I hit that. Okay. And this is going to be a great uh, live chat, I think. I mean, for friends I know who are selling art right now, this is something kind of to help get your, your thoughts into some kind of organization. And for those of you that are more experienced too at online sales, especially if you want to give um, any kind of jump-ins, go right ahead. Just being a weird year again. Um, I know we're, we're based in Texas and, uh, uh, for some of my friends, some of their, uh, and some of my friends in California too, have had their events canceled, uh, COVID still kind of running amok for some of our in-person events, but online and print on demand, it's kind of been a salvation for a lot of people. So we're going to kind of look at this month of September as your prep month and, uh, help you guys get through fourth quarter and hopefully you guys have some sales on there. Uh, there are some of you who do, like I said, excellent um, during fourth quarter because we are so busy <laughs> during this time of year. Uh, we have stayed busy, actually. That's one thing, uh, you know, COVID for us um, has been very busy. It has not slowed, slowed us down at all. We've actually increased our orders. So um, the, kudos to all of y'all who are out there, you know, still selling your prints. Y'all have just, you know, utilized online so well. Okay, James will be joining us here in just a minute. And you'll probably hear some of James, uh, I think he left his mic on, so you will probably be hearing a lot of the team leaving for the day, <laughs> asking last minute questions. Um, and if y'all have not, if y'all are brand new to Finer Works, brand new to print on demand, 
um, this is our website. If you'd like to come in, look at the printing that we do. Um, you can order a certificate here as well. This lets you um, kind of get to kind of feel those samples, our paper and canvas samples uh, and our card samples on there. And you can also add metal prints on there if you want to take a look at those. So um, we, we do not have uh, the Kodak photo papers in there. Uh, that, you know, is they're pretty self-explanatory um, and universal. So we have James now joining us. So let me go ahead and stop sharing my... Oh, I did, uh, were you, were you talking about the uh, sample? Yeah, yeah, I was just telling people who might be new to Finer Works, that's our site and how to order a sample kit, especially a lot of people who may really desperately need to be turning to drop shipping and uh, something for fourth quarter, so. <laughs> um, yeah, go. actually, uh, and, I, and I, something we're looking at, uh, I don't think it's too soon to mention, is we are looking at adding a uh, sample swatch of our mats as well. Uh, so, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I saw one. We, we get the, uh, the question quite often uh, about the uh, colors of the mats, you know, because it's sometimes hard to really tell, you know, what, what you're seeing on your screen. As we all know, <laughs> anyone who's printed uh, online knows that colors don't always match your screen if, uh, in, in every situation. Uh, so, uh, so, they can, so people can see what the real life color looks like and how it compares to say their setting or their artwork. Uh, we are uh, planning on um, uh, putting together uh, kind of like a small swatch book of the different hmm. mats that can people can order. It's not going to be that expensive, mainly just to cover the cost of shipping it. Uh, but uh, uh, that that should help a lot of the people that are wondering how what the mat, different mat tones look like in real life. Yeah, that'd be great. I know for um, me or anybody who's done any of the that's doing framing as well. Mm -hmm. Those are great because you'll be able to kind of look at that swatch book with some of the frame samples. If you have frame samples, like you see behind James and me, those corner samples there. Um, the mine yeah. are real though. Yours are virtual. <laughs> mine are virtual, <laughs> yeah. But they're photo of the real ones. <laughs> but this is actually the shop and you can find us. So, um, but we're going to do that. Uh, that'd be interesting. Uh, anything else that you have kind of coming up? Um, I, I guess even for fourth quarter, just for finer works that you want to mention before we get started? Um, we are looking at some new products and we're trying to uh, perfect them. You know, we've made the mistake in the past of coming out with uh, product options too soon without fully vetting the product. And, uh, um, and so we're you know, having to kind of scramble, kind of tweak things uh, on it. Um, but uh, this one uh, is, is should be uh, pretty good. Um, I'll, I'll say what it is. Uh, it's going to be a portfolio or portfolio covers as well as portfolio pages that can be ordered a la carte. So you can order a portfolio cover. So let's say if you're an art student or you, you want a nice bound way of presenting your your uh, uh, your artwork. Um, we're going to have uh, several different sizes, uh, but bound uh, in a sturdy cover um, mm -hmm. that can be customized. And then uh, both of the front and back. And then uh, you'll be able to, uh, the plan is uh, to be able to have uh, pages made. Uh, basically, they would be like ordering prints through post or online setup tool, but you'd be ordering pages, uh, as many pages as you want, and they'd be on the handy mill photo rack. Um, so, uh, so single-sided, correct? Single-sided. Uh, I wanted to do two-sided, but uh, that creates some uh, some issues, uh, which. Uh, we could overcome, but uh, two side might be further down the line. Plus the uh, paper itself, uh, there is a two sided hand photo rag, but uh, it's not exactly the same. We want it on the 
the same photo rag that we use uh, for fine art prints to get the best quality. But uh, I mean, not that the two-sided version is not good, but the two-sided version is, I, I don't even know what the size that's available in. Uh, if it's available in the sizes we would need, especially for the different size portfolios. But uh, anyway, that's uh, and should be happening before the end of the year. I don't have an exact time frame there, uh, but uh, it, it'll be a nice way to bind your artwork together and present it, um, have it as a coffee table book. And it's gonna be, you know, we want it to look high end and feel high end. So, so we just want to make sure that the materials are, are all of the, of the best quality and it's not going to be overly expensive either, uh, compared to, you know, some of the sites that I've seen that do similar things that I'm, I was like really shocked at how expensive that they were. Um, the other thing we are, uh, I guess the announcement is we've, it looks like we, uh, and, and some people have been asking about the uh, Belgian linen. It looks like our supplier has uh, permanently discontinued the white version, unfortunately. And so we, uh, we just ran out uh, today and we did not find out that, uh, uh, actually we ran out Friday, um, uh, and we didn't find out until today that uh, that they discontinued it, or at least I didn't find out. Um, so uh, if you are printing on the white matte vir uh, Belgian linen, uh, I uh, or have virtual inventory products, I suggest you the, you change those to either artisan canvas or matte canvas. Um, the natural, we are, uh, we still have plenty of the natural, um, which is, uh, has just kind of that off white, very off, almost brown base. Um, uh, and it's, it's, it's ideal for certain types of imagery, uh, but I suspect that that's going to be discontinued too. I don't know for certain. Um, we're, we're trying to find out from the supplier. Um, and I, I think they have a lot more of that in stock. So we're trying to have to kind of, and hopefully they're not watching, <laughs> but uh, uh, we're trying to, we're going to have to try to kind of get them to give us that information because sometimes some of these suppliers don't like to tell us uh, that they're going to discontinue things until after they decided that it seems. But um, anyways, uh, I don't know for certain, but I, I suspect that we will be discontinuing that fairly shortly. I think we only have two rolls of it left. Uh, so uh, that will probably go pretty quick. Um, and a lot of people really like the Belgian linen. Um, I, I really liked it for certain types of images but uh, it's a, uh, um, there's only one supplier, it's manufactured in Europe, but there's only one supplier uh, here in the U.S. right now. And, uh, um, uh, and uh, if they discontinue it, we're kind of, we're, we're kind of stuck. And I don't think we'd, we would be able to order it direct from, from them. Um, from the manufacturer. Um, <clears throat> we don't have any new medias that were uh, on the radar just at, at this moment that we are going to be adding. Um, uh, there is the possibility we, that, that happens, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you get someone that orders uh, uh, a lot of prints on that needs to have a custom run on a certain type of media or it's going to be ordering from us on a regular basis to fill orders. Um, uh, we had a well-known actor just recently. No, wait, did he? No, he ended up going with a, a different media, but uh, uh, he was initially going to be ordering on one of the Hanimio papers uh, that we didn't carry. Um, 
And because his order by him, he's an actor and photographer combined. He, well, he's a photographer, does that kind of as a hobby, but sells his photographs. And this uh, actor uh, uh, was going to be just doing this huge run on a particular head meal media, which we were going to uh, get for him. And then we were going to offer because we knew we were going to be fulfilling his orders on a regular basis on it. He ended up going with the agave, the head of meal agave instead. But, um, but those type of scenarios uh, do pop up on occasion. Um, and uh, so as far as new medias, uh, the only other new information I have at the moment, as far as, um, uh, as, as many of y'all know, we, we've been doing the uh, textured prints. Uh, customers uh, seem to really like those a lot. Uh, you can now customize the texture, make it, uh, and I think, was it last month that we went into detail how to do that? Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if you watch our, you know, on YouTube, you can go back and watch that and, and where we talk about how to uh, 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 do the, uh, the custom, where you can customize the texture. And we've gotten some really interesting uh, uh, images come in and with, with textures that the textures go with the image, but they don't correspond with the image, which is kind of cool. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, people are doing some neat, neat things. Um, and then, uh, uh, and then I, I believe it's next month. We are going to be adding uh, about three thousand square feet to our existing workspace. Um, we uh, for those that are local, uh, we will be. Uh, we'll be moving our, the entrance in our lobby will be uh, suite 101 versus suite 103. So, so and we'll have a, plenty of parking or a lot more easier to find parking uh, once we get uh, that suite. So, uh, uh, so that'll, that, that should make things easier for a lot of people. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. We'll have that new entrance. Our current entrance, if it, those who are local, is on the, well, our front now, which will soon be our side. And uh, where this large arrow is, that will be our, our new entrance, correct? Yes, exactly. Right behind that, that sign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, where that truck is. <laughs> yeah, where that truck is. Uh, um, so, uh, so, yeah, so uh, that will be available for our um uh, probably, uh, well, end of October, early November uh, um, is what we're, we're shooting for. Um, we've already signed the, the uh, paperwork for that, but um, so that's, it, it's a given. Um, and, uh, um, and I think that's pretty much it for any, any news. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess we we'll probably that uh, should get into what today's topic was going to be, right? Yeah, which is uh, preparing for holiday sales. Yeah. Uh, and James is a really good source of, of that also, just because uh, he, he's been running uh, Finer Works for how long now, James? <laughs> well, I, I started it back in the early 2000s. Um, uh, and so, uh, you know, we're, we're going... We're, we're getting close to two decades yeah. of business. It's hard to imagine. Doesn't doesn't seem like it's been that long. Um, and uh, one of the most stressful times of year for Finer Works has always been during the Christmas season. And so, uh, uh, no matter how much you prepare, <laughs> and I know this the the title of this is preparing for the the holiday. Uh, you know, preparing for the holidays. Uh, As uh, best we can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, hopefully we can uh, uh, eliminate some of that stress. Mm -hmm. um, it's always stressful for us because there's a lot of unknowns that happen. Uh, you know, we don't know uh, what type of water volume to expect. Uh, do we have enough supplies? Do we have enough staff? Do we... Uh, um, is the 
post office or UPS or whoever, are they going to be running on schedule? Um, uh, can, you know, can we get everything we need, all the resources we need? So the, there's all this, uh, this angst that goes into uh, uh, getting ready for the holiday season. Um, I, I, I will admit that uh, over the past year, uh, since, you know, in, in 2020 and into 2021, uh, you know, that, that going into the holiday season has, has not been as traumatic as it's been in the past. Uh, that we, we don't see that, that, that crazy transition because we've been so busy year round, um, uh, matter of fact, we, we have a notice on our website right now and which uh, we've been reluctant to take off that say turnaround times are greater than normal uh, right now. Well, that's almost become the norm because it's been so busy, um, especially last year. Um, this year has settled down a little bit. Um, and I think um, many of those that are selling art online can probably uh, uh, will will agree with me or, or, or probably experience this the same scene that it's 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 not as crazy as last year but it's still it's you know uh it's still you know fairly fairly steady for most people for most artists definitely uh much better than in years past and you if some of the background noise uh, starts to uh uh come in let me know because uh, we we are working late here um tonight, especially in the framing department. Um, so uh, uh, what, what I was uh, uh, going to say is that, yeah, going into the holiday season has always been a little, little, little uh, hectic, a little worrisome for us because we, we just don't know what to expect. And, and we, we, we try to, um, but um, one of the things over the past 20 years, uh, almost uh, that I've come to learn is, is, is uh, certain patterns and uh, uh, to look out for and uh, how to best overcome some of the uh, potential uh, uh, challenges associated with selling during the holiday season. So I'm going to share some of that with you. And uh, when putting this outline together, you know, uh, I, I had an idea as to uh, what I was going to talk about, but Melissa uh, uh, reminded me of a bunch of things, but she sent me kind of a list of questions. And so I was able to fit in a lot of those. Uh, and uh, later uh, I am going to also, uh, uh, we're gonna get, get to do a little Photoshop tutorial. Um, I'm going to and show you all how to produce kind of like a, an, an online ad for the holiday season. Um, but uh, oh, first I'm gonna try to answer some of the questions that were, were, were listed in that outline that Melissa sent when I was preparing my own outline. Um, so, but uh, uh, I'm just, uh, just some, you know, no one needs to answer, um, but uh, are you all, you know, those watching or those that will be watching, uh, ask yourself, uh, are you all going to be selling more during the holiday season, during the Christmas season? And I think the answer for most artists that are selling, whether it be online or in person at art shows, is yes. Uh, there are a lot more, there are fall art shows, festivals going on again. Still not at the levels pre-pandemic, but they are happening. So artists are getting their artwork out uh, in person, selling, selling in person more. Uh, but online sales continues to be a strong sector for a, a strong channel for artists to sell. And so, so again, so the question is, uh, you know, are you going to be selling more during the holiday season? Well, Chances are yes, because people are buying more during the holiday season. So uh, 
that brings to you know that 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 brings up the question is when should you start preparing such as ordering inventory um, for the holiday season and and the answer is right now okay we are still in the uh, the third quarter we haven't entered the fourth quarter that starts uh, first of October for for, for many. Um, uh, but uh, really, if you're starting just at the 1st of October, you're really kind of getting at, you know, entering at the tail end as, as to when you should be starting, uh, you, when you should be preparing. Um, but there are some things uh, that y'all should be aware of, uh, especially uh, now, I, I would just said, I, I probably should have, uh, we should have talked about this last year as well, but we still kind of didn't know what was going on with the pandemic. But uh, some of the fallout of the pandemic has uh, uh, probably, I, I would say for many has have uh, increased the uh, potential as to, or increased, or, or quickened when they, they need to start planning, okay? One of the things that uh, you need to be aware of uh, is that turnaround times uh, I'm, I'm for, for supplies has become greater. So when we run out of inventory, our ability to get replacement inventory has, uh, has, ha, has uh, been uh, hindered. So, you know, picture framing is, is the classic example and, and it's probably one of the most affected since most of the moldings are supplied from overseas. Um, right now, companies like the molding, uh, picture frame molding companies uh, are reluctant to keep larger inventories or the, uh, the, the inventories the size that they had pre-pandemic. So when they're out, they don't have another, you know, uh, whatever, you know, load of, of, of that same particular molding coming in right behind it. They're not, a lot of times, they're not ordering replacement until the next quarter or for the next quarter. So there could be this gap, especially if they run out of it quickly. Like there could be this, you know, you know, gap of, you know, weeks, if not months of them being out of inventory. And uh, in many cases, the, the raw materials are, are the are the not necessarily the raw materials or the, the uh, materials, the supplies are getting stuck on container ships because of the inability for uh, uh, them to clear customs in as timely a manner as they as they normally would. There's uh, staff shortages uh, in those areas, and and uh, that is keeping supplies from coming from overseas into the hands of the suppliers. And so when the suppliers don't have it, they can't distribute it to companies like us, which uh, need to, uh, which need those supplies to, to produce those, those goods. So one of the things I want to uh, make people aware of is that uh, supplies right now are harder to come by. Um, the uh, other thing is uh, parts and equipment are also uh, <laughs> experiencing the same thing. When we have a printer that goes down, as a matter of fact, one of our printers uh, today it was down for, uh, I wanna say about four weeks. And only today did we get the uh, materials and supplies or the parts uh, uh, and equipment in uh, to be able to repair that printer. So it, it took four weeks, whereas normally, it would have, we would have had that up and running within a, you know, with this particular situation, probably within a day or two. So, uh, so that's also uh, has had an effect. Um, what, what this comes down to is you, you don't want to wait to the last moment because at the last moment, what you need may not be available. So, uh, so, so my first bit of advice is based upon that is, is, is get started now. Um, 
turnaround times do increase um, as the year, uh, as, as we get closer to the end of the year, closer to Christmas. Um, but uh, I, I will admit that it's this year, uh, turnaround times have been very sporadic just all around. Um, part of it is because the uh, supply shortages that I spoke about, um, we get orders, uh, we get orders uh, coming in uh, almost every minute of the day. So uh, we might have, you know, X amount of, of some, some particular item, product, material, something that was needed to make that particular print. Um, and it's maybe it's a very specialized print, okay? And have plenty of it in stock. Someone then comes in and places a huge order and wipes out that entire inventory. Notice that normally the warehouses keep that inventory uh, or the replacement inventory uh, readily available. So, you know, we get on the phone, order some more, and it's here the next day. Um, but that's changed. Um, so, so that's created this turnaround time uh, issue uh, or issue with turnaround times that we did not have before. So what I'm going, what I'm telling you is that turnaround times have been very sporadic, and I expect them to continue to be sporadic uh, as we get into the Christmas season. We have done a good job of getting pe more people hired, more people trained to accommodate the workload, but we're running more and more situations where we just have staff standing around uh, waiting for you know, what they need to complete their job versus uh, you know, just trying to rush through it, which, which is in some ways is good because you know, when we're rushing through things, we're, we're less likely to make, uh, we're, we're more likely to make mistakes versus if, if we uh, are not rushing through things. But then again, when the materials do arrive, they then find themselves kind of having to rush. So it's, you know, it's not always a good thing either. Um, we will be posting due dates uh, uh, as far as, you know, when is, you know, the, when is the last uh, day uh, to order, say, metal prints or canvas prints, uh, you know, if you want to have those prints to arrive by Christmas. Um, we we usually post those. Uh, About Thanksgiving week, I think, like right around that yeah, time. Yeah, but we're, we're going to try to post those sooner uh, this year. We're going to try to... We, we, we're going to probably post those at the early part of November um, this year. Um, That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and we will probably have a little bit wider of a window. Last year, we had a wider window, which means we posted the, the due dates earlier than or, okay. or further uh, from Christmas and closer to Christmas. And yeah. yeah. Okay. And those are from last year, so. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I'm not sure yet if the how how much are uh, how this year will compare uh, versus from last year as far as the dates, but it's that seemed to work out well for us last year. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would say probably ninety in the upper 90s percentage of orders did get to people before Christmas, as far as if they ordered before those deadlines. Um, uh, exceptions usually were with international orders and we'll go into some things about international shortly, which uh, we'll, we'll act is actually, uh, we actually got some good news on, on that front for a change. Um, um, so, but we uh, determined that the holiday deadlines, uh, uh, that, well, they're determined by general turnaround time of products and historical data from producing some of these products in past years. Uh, and that's what we did with uh, this, uh, with last year. And we'll try to do that again this year. You know, I, I know I, I, I kind of ranted about the supply shortage and, uh, you know, it doesn't have, 
it, it's not like it's affecting every single order. Um, it's just it, it's it's a a still a small percentage of orders are affected by supply issues, but unfortunately, you know, it it, it does happen uh, quite a lot because we do quite a lot of orders. Uh, if that makes sense, it's just a uh, uh, just percentage wise, it's it's still rel relative. We still stay pretty much ahead of it, but. Um, uh, regardless, uh, we will announce the deadlines in the newsletter and uh, on a website. And social, yeah. Yeah, and social, of course. Um, <laughs> so let's see. So let me, and, and that, that was a question that, that we actually had um, beforehand. Um, so uh, uh, I will we'll say this is even, and we've done this in the past. I, I don't think we had to last year, but um, due dates can be subject to change um you know something uh comes up I, I remember one year um what was it oh uh it was it, it must i think it was it was i don't remember what the particular product was now i think i, I, think, I want to say it was metal but i think we had an, an issue where we got a bad batch of metal one time. Um, it was, I think, the first year that we started offering it. And we had to change the due date on the metal prints uh, uh, because of uh, this bad batch that we had because, you know, we just didn't have, we weren't going to get the replacement batch that we needed in on time. So, uh, like I said, due dates can be subject to change, but you know, we like I said, we post those on our website, and we uh, this year we'll have them uh, posted early November. Um, uh, one of the things I want to talk about next is uh, when it comes to uh, planning for the holiday season is shipping. Um, uh, Usually, uh, you know, I, if if you're having your your orders drop ship by finer works, uh, then uh, it's not as much of an issue. But um, th there are a couple things that that you you may want to be aware of. Um, it was brought to my attention on uh, just recently um, that USPS plans to add a surcharge. Uh, to holiday packages, uh, and I believe it's it's, it's going to be starting early October to the and go to uh, right after Christmas. Um, now that's you, you can find that surcharge on their website, um, but uh, from what I've been uh, hearing, it's going to be anywhere from twenty five cents to five dollars per per package or letter. Um, so expect to pay higher rates if you are shipping uh, items uh, yourself via the U.S. Postal Service. Um, 25 cents to $5 may not seem like a lot, but let's say it's, let's say you're selling a bunch of eight by tens uh, uh, out of your living room uh, at home and uh, you're sending, you know, 50 of those out a day. Well, you know, that's 25 extra dollars that, you know, that it might cost you uh, to ship those, uh, those uh, 50 prints. So, uh, so just kind of, uh, you know, keep that in mind uh, when you're uh, setting up your own shipping costs. Um, you may want to, uh, uh yeah, just maybe pad your prices a little bit. Um, and, and we can go into, you know, determining pricing during the holiday season. Uh, is it okay to uh, raise your prices? Should you raise your prices during the holiday season? Um, well, uh, actually, you can, but it might be counterproductive. Uh, the holiday season uh, is a... a um, is really kind of uh, uh, the time of year when you should be looking at selling uh, in volume versus uh, versus any other time of year because 
people are looking for good deals, uh, even when it comes to artwork online. Um, so uh, just kind of keep that in mind. So, you, you know, if you're going to, when it comes to uh, 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 pricing your, your shipping, how you're going to price your shipping, uh, think about maybe adding an extra, you know, 50 cents, 75 cents, whatever it is that, that you think it might average out. Uh, again, look at the, the U.S. Postal website. Uh, look up uh, at surchar holiday surcharge. And they will give you a list of, you know, uh, examples of, you know, uh, what it will cost, you know, what, what the surcharge will be. Uh, it's not the easiest to decipher, but, you know, just, you know, spend a little time with it and, and, and you should get figured and understand uh, what, what you would have to pay. Uh, one way is you might be able to offset that, some of that, uh, is to buy packaging materials in bulk if you're not already. Um, so if there's ways that you can offset your prices, then do so. Um, I mean, you should be doing that anyway. Okay. But especially with the surcharges coming uh, into play, consider alternative shipping options like, uh, uh, UPS or FedEx, or if you, uh, live overseas, uh, or, or uh, live outside the U S uh, DHL. Um, you know, uh, admittedly, you'll probably pay more with those services, uh, but, you know, uh, they tend to provide a better service than uh, the local post office in most cases uh, from our experience. But, uh, but, you know, look at your options, okay? Uh, we have, a, I think, a... Let's see, I'm trying to see who's sending that to us. It's uh, Dennis. Uh, Jordan was saying UPS ground package, 30 cents, uh, 350 for large flat items like framed artworks. Uh, the rate for USA, higher rates from outside US locations. Yeah, which uh, I think you were kind of saying too, James, um, as far as it would be higher from outside uh, yeah, well, locations. Yeah, and and one of the things that uh, carriers look at is they look at what they call zones. Um, they, they, they break up uh, shipping yeah. into zones. And so, uh, you know, if, if something is go going from zone, you know, to one to zone five or what, whatever the, they call the zone, that affects uh, price as well. And it can affect the surcharge that they're talking about. So, uh, but take a look at it. Try to come up with an average that, you know, might be able to help you. How about, um, James, I know a lot of artists I know tend to buy the flat rate boxes. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's one you end up, you do end up knowing kind of your shipping cart. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I, I would not be surprised, though, if that surcharge is applicable even to the flat rate boxes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, or... I don't know for certain, but uh, you, uh, I would suggest people, uh, if, if they are relying on flat rate, um, uh, to check into that to find find out if if, uh, if those flat rate packages um, are not affected. You, you'd think they they sh well. I, I would say I would think they shouldn't be, but I would also not be surprised if they, if they are. Yeah. They, they have, uh, I know uh, Dennis is commenting that flat rate surcharges um, is done by pound. That's true. They do that by pound for surcharges, but these could be additional surcharges that we might see for the holiday. And so, yeah, this is, yeah, specifically a holiday surcharge. Yeah. So, according to the Wall Street Journal, it was an article, I think um, August 10th, they were saying that they, these would be the proposal from the USPS was um, to start October 3rd through December 26th. Yeah, and, I, and it seems to have been finalized. Uh, that Those were the dates that I yeah. that I saw. So, um, yeah. Like he was saying, so, if you want to just go to uh, the site here, uh, mm -hmm. usps.com, and kind of search in here for those, and you, you'll get some information and, on those surcharges. And, and, and not to be a cynic, but frankly, I don't expect that that surcharge to be of any benefit to anyone because uh 
Um, right now, we are still, we, we have been shifting more and more packages, more and more shipments over to the post office, or uh, from post office to UPS because the uh, uh, post office has continued to disappoint us uh, this year with uh, lack of tracking being updated, packages not getting scanned like they should. Um, it's just been, uh, you know, very disappointing. Um, we have negotiated rights with UPS and we continue to, we just recently uh, entered into a new uh, a negotiated uh, rate with them for uh, SurePost packages so that we can get uh, we can move uh, some of the what we normally would ship via the post office to UPS SurePost. Now, UPS SurePost is uh, is a hybrid service. So, and so you're thinking, okay, well, how does that help anything? Well, it, well, it actually does because one of the things is with the SurePost is not only does the package get picked up by UPS and get scanned in a timely fashion. But uh, uh, what we're seeing so far, when we've looked at the, uh, uh, the delivery of the uh, packages is that the uh, average uh, transit time has, has uh, gone from uh, what used to be about uh, seven to about, oh, one to two week turnaround time or transit time to uh, four days uh, as far as an average transit time for the sure post. So uh, uh, in many cases, it's, it's less than that. And uh, about 80% of the time, the packages are actually getting delivered by UPS and not turned over to the post office for final delivery. So, uh, so SurePost is actually, you know, UPS is, is uh, carrying the burden of, of much of SurePost right now, uh, just because the uh, post office has, has continued to disappoint so many people. Um, so, uh, so that's, you know, something good is, is we're able to uh, utilize UPS's network over the post office network and have a little bit more reliable things like tracking and, and so forth. Um, uh, we don't know, uh, if transit time will take longer, uh, uh, this holiday season last year, uh, it, it definitely took longer. Um, uh, I would say, uh, it added anywhere from one to two extra days, uh, to many of our priority mail packages. Pride and Mail is supposed to get to people in two days. Realistically, we tell people two to three days. Um, we had many packages during the holiday season that were seeing five-day transit times. Um, uh, for international, um, uh, we are shipping more packages via UPS and even started... Uh, have uh, arranged for uh, regular DHL pickups as well. Uh, our UPS, you know, we, we do, we, we, we lose money on international orders when it comes to shipping. So we, uh, we use uh, either UPS, DHL, depending upon which one is cheaper for us. So, uh, um, uh, so we might ship uh, one of your prints and let's say you have us drop ship an order uh, via UPS to, you know, England to the UK one day and we'll use UPS. And then the next day have us drop ship an order to France and we might use DHL. Really depends upon our, our software, which pulls the rates, which, which shows the better rates. So, uh, uh, so we are, one of the problems we have had with the post office is because tracking many of these, Europe, especially European countries, and, and to be frank, most of the international orders that we ship to uh, are, are going to either Canada or EU countries. Um, most of the uh, uh, shipments 
the, what, many of these uh, EU countries have an agreement with the post office, the US post office, to continue to update tracking um, uh, when it gets to, you know, when they get the package. Well, that hasn't been getting done. Um, and even the countries that were relatively good at doing it, like uh, what is, I think it's Royal Mail or Royal Post with, uh, with the UK, um, hadn't been doing it. So we would get uh, packages that would uh, show tracking. They would stop in Chicago. That would be the last you'd hear from. Chicago was the like the main hub for international packages. And so uh, basically at that point, it got on a uh, international flight and had gone to, you know, wherever that international flight was supposed to go to, got turned over to whatever local postal service in that country, UK, France, Germany, what, what have you. Um, but the tracking would never get updated or the tracking, the whatever communication mechanism that went on between uh, uh, that destination country and the US, no, did that communication, uh, what wasn't happening. And so it would get delivered, but you know, you had no way of knowing it. Well, by switching to UPS and DHL for more of our international shipments, we're, you know, that's less likely to happen because the uh, tracking, it's, it, it's retained within those particular networks. Um, also, uh, items do speed through customs uh, generally more quickly with uh, other carriers. So, uh, so the, uh, we're seeing uh, many of the uh, uh, international shipments, which before were taking, you know, two weeks, three weeks, even sometimes four weeks, those same types of shipments are getting to their uh, destinations within uh, three and four days. So, uh, so that is some good news uh, for those that are uh, having us uh, ship orders internationally. If you're shipping yourself, uh, if you are the one that is uh, shipping internationally, I, I, I recommend, you're, yes, you're going to pay more in, in most cases, but I do recommend you, uh, you use UPS or FedEx or DHL for those international orders. Um, um, your customers will be happier in the long run. Um, any questions on that? So far, no. <laughs> and and that's like I mean to sum that really up it is kind of the shipping um, I guess the shipping forecast for this fourth quarter so that you have um, yeah yeah uh, um, and especially yeah. you know with the the Christmas season I you know uh, I I think I mentioned that you know cases where orders didn't get to customers on time in the uh, last Christmas and previous Christmases because they've gone international. And uh, right now we're seeing, uh, even though that, you know, you, it's not like UPS and FedEx and the, all the others are, are, you know, you know, things have eased up for them. They're, they're just as busy as everyone else. It's just, they have better, they, they have a better infrastructure, a better network when it comes to managing uh, the, these packages. Uh, so, or the, 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 the parcels and so forth. So, uh, so I, I am a big, you know, fan of, of using uh, the, uh, these carriers uh, over the uh, US mail service when possible. Um, okay. Um, so those are some of the things I, I guess we kind of, a lot of that were warnings. Um, uh, but I do want to talk about some strategies. Um, uh, we're going to talk about some marketing strategies and uh, one of the things to uh, think about um, uh, before the uh, holiday season uh, uh, starts, which is right around the corner. 
Um, one of the things I want to, uh, you know, people think about is uh, whether or not it's worthwhile for them to uh, uh, order inventory, uh, package and ship their orders themselves, or to uh, rely on finer works drop shipping service, or you know m- maybe another service similar to what we do. Um, and uh, you know there, there's no right or wrong answer to that. There's some benefits to both, um, but one of the things that uh, you can do, uh, and and I, I'm all for promoting our drop shipping service, our order fulfillment service. That that is an important part of who we are. But I also recognize it's not for everyone and that there's things that you can do uh, during the holiday season that uh, uh, only you alone can do. So take, for instance, uh, the artist that is selling, you know, prints uh, on Etsy or her Shopify site, et cetera. One of the things that you, if, if that describes you or someone like you uh, that you can do is you can really kind of customize that packaging, make it feel special because uh, uh, that, that chances are, if it's a, it's, if it's a holiday sale or, or, you know, something sold during the holidays, it's going to be used as a Christmas gift. So think about that. Think about, okay, where's this, where's this item going to go to? Or who is it going to go to? Um, who's going to see it? You know. Um, so let's assume most of these are going to be gifts. So you want to include things about yourself as the artist. Let's say you know if, if my mom sees some artwork at a art store or wherever, you know, she buys it and she gives it to me. That's, that's great. I'd like to know who that artist is. But is she going to think about that? She might, she might not, okay? But you as the seller, you can bypass the person buying that artwork uh, and communicate that information directly to the final recipient. And that means, you know, create some inserts, uh, some cards, you know, you know about the artist. Um, some special packaging to make that a little bit more memorable. So uh, while it will not necessarily increase your sales for the holiday season, it could create a customer and later on down the line. So there you, you're getting, you're basically, you're marketing yourself and your art to someone that is already getting your artwork, which sounds counterintuitive, but there's a good possibility that they might want to buy some artwork from you themselves. Because that first time they didn't have to buy it, it was given to them. So think about that scenario where it might be a good idea to create some sort of package insert, something special that you can uh, include with that package. Now, again, if you're using our drop shipping services, you might be limited to being able to do that. But if you are, you know, packaging and and ordering prints or uh, uh, shipping prints out yourself, then you are in the perfect position to be able to do that. Um, Developing marketing strategies. So we all know, and it's nothing new, but Facebook and Instagram are both great platforms during the holiday season, whenever. If you're not using either one of those platforms, uh, you really should consider doing so. I know there's controversy that's always surrounding social media. You know, there's been controversy surrounding social media since uh since social media has become kind of mainstream. Uh, uh, But, uh, and I don't agree with everything that uh, those that run the social media networks do or don't do, um, um, whether or not they're, you know, 
know, whether or not that they are as open as they should be, or they're not, you know, or if they're too open, you know, those, those are, you know, for other people to debate. And I don't want to get into that, mm -hmm. but I do definitely believe that uh, they are excellent platforms to market your artwork and you should take advantage of those. Um, uh, one of the things you can do is you can really make that presentation of your artwork personal. Yeah. Hold a print close to the to your camera, to your phone. Show the detail of the artwork. Show what you're offering. Show what you're selling. Talk about it. Melissa, maybe you can go into some more detail about that. Yeah, um, I, I suggest for September, actually we, on Geo Galleries, um, we started talking to our artist about doing this last month, you know, making sure, you know, um, one, all of your social platforms should have on their profile page, the links to all, all of the sites you're selling. Uh, so right now, take this time to go through all of your social networks, make sure they're updated. Some people have maybe an old... Uh, fine art america page that isn't relevant anymore and you go it says error of cannot find page make sure right now to go through all of those social media platforms and update your profiles make sure all of the links are there to go buy your stuff on there um increase your following during this time which means you know posting a little more uh making sure any email blasts that you're doing right now include your social networks if you're out at a physical event through september um, or, you know, start making sure that you're always having something out there that has your socials that people can follow you, even if they're just people who are passing by and they just happen to look, it's them getting that social and coming back to be a repeat customer later. Um, as James is also saying too, and here, our, our unbox always has great uh, ideas uh, on our post because they come from our customers. And uh, like this one here, you're seeing, um, a, I think this is a great photo and presentation of the work here. It's a signed um, and numbered edition print on here. Uh, they also have some enamel pens that they throw in with their orders. And uh, we love sharing your stuff like that. So when you're doing some of these posts, mentioning some of the companies that you work with, um, like Finer Works uh, and Wizard Pens, in this case for the enamel pens, and that increases being shown to a whole separate other uh, customer base you know artists buy from artists one uh photographer no matter if you're an artist or photographer you're still a consumer uh so having those companies share it uh wherever you can tag somebody if you do anything right now um uh, any collaboration artwork pieces or the models in your thing tag them because you know their their whole following sees it as well i, I think uh melissa you 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 just touched on something that that definitely gets um uh, i guess not enough attention is that what you said that artists do buy from other artists mm -hmm. and uh it, it it's amazing uh how much artwork that we see goes through here that's going to other custom uh, other artists that are also customers of yeah uh, and and printers buy from uh, artists, I have a lot of prints from Geo Gallery artists. Um, I mean, that I think when we first started Geo Gallery, I tested it that way. As I had gotten friends onto Geo Galleries, I was buying, you know, some stuff, wanted to be supportive, but some things I liked. Um, and it's easier for me to do that because, you know, I love my artist friends, but sometimes it's like selling is not always top of mind for them. I love that I can go to their Geo Galleries, order a mug, and send it to another friend. Um, so yeah, the, you know, just remember not only, uh, you know, your selling base, other selling base. So tag people, and he did a really good job. If you can look at this post uh, of tagging people in there, and then there's always the hashtags, mm -hmm. and you can Google best hashtags for art, best uh, hashtags for photography, and then during Christmas, get niche in there too. Like, um, you know, some of y'all have a. Uh, uh, Christmas art that's coming out. Maybe it's floral. Uh, some are maybe regional landscape work that you do, uh, uh, photos and, and artwork. Go ahead and find some of the hashtags that work there. Think outside the box. Um, sometimes I use on geo galleries hashtags like art collector news as opposed to just art collectors. 
and featured artist um, on there. So uh, then I also use stuff like interior design, uh, home decor. And these are some things I, I rarely see in in um, in art posts. Home decor is one y'all should be using. Interior design should be another one y'all are using because the people who look at those stuff looking whenever they're gonna do staging a room um, or they're gonna set up a design for clients, they need that art. Um, having those in there just to kind of fill in is great. Uh, so go ahead and during this time, build your social presence during September. So that way, uh, and also if you can with your social, remember social as James was pointing out, these companies uh, are companies. They don't belong to you. This is kind of like getting to set up your booth inside your local mall or something like that. You don't own the mall. If the mall decided to close down that day, it goes with them. Everything on here that uh, you do should somehow go back to your website and on your website, you should try to capture the emails to make it because that is something you do own that belongs to you once you have those emails and you're able to do a little more direct marketing to them. No. So try to do that because, uh, you know, social is, is just, uh, I like to think of them as great billboards on the internet highway kind of thing. So, you know, people, I mean, I aimlessly scroll through uh, Instagram, God knows how many times. And I, even when I used to do my gallery days, it's where I discovered artists um, or where I ended up following, I want to say um, almost now as a buyer, uh, there are, artist uh, I would follow as a, I liked as a kid. I found them as an adult and able to get into their work. And now I have adult money and understand financing and can maybe get some original works um, on there. So always think of your social as some um, ways to cultivate uh, that, you know, return buyer and, and, you know, kind of grow your buyer. You might have somebody who's just kind of a looky loo kind of person, but they keep seeing it, keep seeing it. And, they love it. They know they love it. They're going to come back and they're probably going to go ahead and buy a purchase. So social media right now, make sure that's all cleaned up. Make sure your profile looks good. If you have uh, multiple websites uh, for selling, like you have an Etsy, let's say you have a geo galleries. Um, you can also use something called Linktree. Okay. And there's a free version on here. And uh, that means you can't put like a graphic or anything, you, you know, if you want to pay for it, you can all jump in your graphics, but you're able to add a bunch of sites on here. Um, for Finer Works, for instance, I use it so that y'all have a quick link to our, you know, first Tuesdays on our YouTube, to our YouTube direct or ordering a sample kit. Some of those questions that y'all have, going ahead and using a link tree to kind of make sure, uh, make sure all of your site links are uh, active and working. Uh, if you have customers that have tagged you, that's a great thing about encouraging tags. Um, you can use those as post or story post. Uh, just, I, I've known just watching um, art, like artists uh, selling kind of YouTube videos. A lot of artists say that the reels and TikTok are doing so well for them. And um, we have had uh, one of the artists that have been on our uh, first Tuesday Mary Jane, uh, who's really awesome at tagging us in a lot of her stuff. Uh, she does a lot of TikTok uh, videos and has had, she's just done, I wonder, because she's joined us, I think, just last year. And her orders are starting to increase. And as you see, her number following is increased. I think when she was first starting with us, it might have been in the thousands. And uh, she does that and she's really good at cross promoting her platforms. Follow me on Instagram when she's on TikTok. Um, follow me on TikTok or using the TikTok um, post and, and uh, kind of squeezing it into her Instagram post. Really good ideas. And go to our uh, unbox post and follow those artists and take a look at their sites because some of them are doing really good jobs and, and you just need those ideas on like, what can I put up for uh, social. Um, you know, uh, just little things she does. She shows like behind the scenes in her studio packaging for customers. Um, if she gets a image from a customer, she'll post it up here. And again, that also helps you. And uh, I mean, just like a studio review, how she keeps her prints, um, how she does hand embellishment. She's just posting all the time. And I think this is going to help her really great through this holiday season. I'm 
I'm really uh, just excited to see what her holiday sales are going to be at because she's done a really excellent job on social. Um, so she's a great artist to follow on there. Uh, same with Lauren Luna. But uh, that's that's something y'all want to do right now is kind of through September, start padding your social, make sure it's clean. And then, um, you know, make sure that your sites are all clean as well. You don't have any discontinued inventory on there. Um, things like that, just so that everything is linking nice and neat so that the customer has no hard time finding products. Also, uh, if you are a business profile, which I suggest you do have a business profile for your art, especially with Instagram and a business page on Facebook and their Instagram and Facebook are both owned by the same company. They have the shops on here and you can go ahead and do shops on there. And I'll go into, um, the, the, you can't see the shop on a desktop. That's the bad part, but uh, you do get the, I'm trying to think if I, you can see anything off of it. Cause I noticed they don't have it here and I'm pretty sure she does have a shop. Yeah, they just don't add the shop on the desktop version. But on the mobile, you have a, a shop variation on here. So on each one of these, I'm able to put the link to that website page so that they can go to the artist page and buy. So if you're able to, you can do that. You can just load the same graphic up in the shop. Um, I put, because Geo Galleries, uh, when you go into a Geo Galleries page, and we'll just take a look really quick over there. Uh, especially, this is also great for those of you who are joining us who are on Geo Galleries. When you go to a Geo Galleries page, all of your uh, inventory is on one page. So I actually use one URL on here. And on the shop inside uh, Instagram, I just put, you know, from starting prices, I might actually start at the print prices, um, starting at $30 plus US. Again, it gets it gets you possibly a sale right off of Instagram. So you can link all of these to your website shops. It doesn't have to be anything loaded on here directly. And I kind of find it better than the uh, than the Facebook shop on there. Uh, you can load the inventory on here, and it goes to your website, and they check out your website because then you're not kind of restricted to the Facebook um, delivery time. I think it's like three days, which I'm just insane. They need to really fix that up on their shops because especially with, and I think they did, I think they've kind of increased the days um, now because of the shipping industry. But uh, I, I think you have more control going ahead and putting this on Instagram and directing it back to your shop. So those are little things on social. You can kind of get started and right now this month, you know, so that way when you start building these um, posts later on to direct sales, some of these are already sitting there. You got them. You can either, you know, repost them, whatever you want to do during the holiday season. But get your practice in on right now, and uh, that can be your content. Yeah, and uh, you know that uh, also kind of leads into email marketing. Um, now's the time to build a list if you haven't done so yet. You know, uh, uh, constant contact, Mailchimp. Uh, there's a, a few other great, great ones that you can use, uh, uh, but uh, they're all uh, email marketing platforms. Um, some of them, uh, I think Constant Contact MailChimp still offer like, uh, you know, X number of subscribers is even free. You know, you can, uh, uh, it, it won't cost you anything uh, until you reach a certain uh, volume of, of subscribers. But uh, uh, you can carry over some of the same uh, material, some of the same uh, uh, content from your social media, use it in, in email newsletters. Because there's a lot of people that, that aren't on social media or don't buy you know, on social media, don't participate, but they do still read their emails. So there's a certain segment of the market that uh, you as an artist could potentially be potentially be missing out on if you're just reliant strictly on the uh, social media uh, mm -hmm. platforms. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of content, uh, I, I think I mentioned a little bit earlier that I wanted to do a little Photoshop tutorial. 
And so uh, I'm going to have to take yeah. over the screen here. So let me give you host a uh, thing right here. Hold on. One second. Let me make sure I got these. Uh, files and we got Photoshop open. Okay. And these are going to be how to make uh, mock-ups basically uh, for ads. Yeah. So, on your uh, where is that? Okay, so there they are. Um, okay, so um, yeah, before I take over the screen, let, let me tell you. So one of the things is about, about content is uh, when we're talking about social media and we're talking about online, whether it be a, you know an Etsy listing, an Etsy ad, um, Shopify product listing, is it takes imagery, okay? And all too often, artists are reliant on the uh, the image that is their artwork to sell, okay? But I'll tell you what, photos of your art sell better. And let, let me explain to you why. What, what, is, what is going on here when a person sees a, a pretty picture online, a, a picture that they like online versus a, a, an actual, what appears to be a physical print uh, online? When they see the artwork online uh, as an image, uh, they, in a sense, own that. They own it in their mind. They don't actually own the artwork, you know, in the literal sense, but they own it in their mind. They, they can go look at it anytime they want. It's on their computer. They see the, the entire artwork in, in, in its completeness, but it's just digital. There's no tangible value to it. Uh, it doesn't seem like it is has the same, you know, sense of value. Same sort of uh, uh, doesn't have all the dimension. Doesn't have the uh, the substance that an actual print or original piece would have. So when you show your artwork, show a photo of that print. Show a photo of that painting. Um, so for them to sh fully engage with that image, to fully absorb that image, they have to have the physical product, okay? And how do you do that? Well, one is you create mock-ups. Now, during the Christmas season, I wanna tell people, focus on creating holiday-themed ads because those are going to, you know, give the, you know, those are going to kind of steer uh, potential buyer into buying, to making a Christmas purchase, you know, at the time of the year when they're more likely to be looking for gifts, okay? Direct them to, you know, remind them, hey, these make great gifts because what if someone, you know, that likes your artwork, goes to your website, sees your artwork, and they're saying, you know, but they're not really shopping right now. But you put that, you know, little Christmas tree in the background that, you know, uh, you know, holly, Christmas or what, what have you, the Christmas themed props uh, in the background. And get some thinking, hey, that would make a great gift. I can get that for my friend or I can get that for a family member, et cetera. Okay. So create holiday themed mock-ups. Okay. Now, mock-ups can be, or, or holiday-themed ads. Now, ads can be photos of your prints, or they can be virtual. We call those mock-ups, okay? And I'm going to show you an example of what that would be and how you can do that in Photoshop. So let me go ahead and take over the screen. Where is the takeover screen button? Um, you want to share your screen? Yeah. There we Get go. Down at the bottom? There we go. I found it. Okay. All right, so I am in Photoshop and I'm assuming everyone can see my screen now. So uh, I just grabbed some images from Shutterstock. Um, Shutterstock is uh, a resource. There's lots of stock image 
sites out there, but I, I did a, uh, uh, a search for Christmas themed uh, walls uh, for artwork. I think I put in the word artwork, but you can play around with different keywords and you can find uh, uh, things like this, okay? Now notice it just looks like a blank canvas on there, okay? But hey, that, you know, uh, you know, if I have the artwork that this would work for, why not use this to sell my prints? Now you might not be selling, this looks like maybe a 30 by 40 canvas print. Maybe you're selling some 16 by 20s, you know, you're selling some uh, eight by tens. That, that's not important. The important thing is that you are selling the idea associated with the fact that your artwork has a tangible form. And so, again, you have the Christmas tree, you have the, the stars, uh, these items uh, to, uh, to bring a sense or, or put, plant in a person's mind the idea of holiday, the holiday season and what comes with the holiday season buying holiday gifts. So one of the things that I would do with this, okay, and uh, is I would probably uh, do this and we, I might use something like this in our newsletter um, to promote a special, you know, that we have, but you could do the same thing to promote your artwork. And so I'm going to open this Shutterstock image. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my my artwork which is actually another shutterstock image in this case but i'm going to place the artwork on the canvas and make it look like it's really part of that canvas so i'm going to go ahead and come over here and i'm going to place link or you can go place embedded you know whichever you prefer and i'm going to select i'm going to select this artwork right here which is some watercolor of some grapes. And I'm going to place it on top. And you can see down here where it's over the background layer of the original image. Now, holding my shift key down, I'm going to go ahead and size this. If my computer lets me. A little bit of a lay there. Let's try this again. Just real simple process. Now I think that's sized. Now it's running a little slow here. I think I got too much open. <laughs> okay, there we go. So now I'm gonna drag this. I'm gonna drag this onto the canvas. Well, that doesn't look very realistic, does it? Well, let's do a little trick with the layer. Remember, this is a layer. Most of y'all who have worked in Photoshop are familiar with this, but there might be some people out there that are not. I wanna make this look like it's on that canvas. Well, how do I do that? Well, the way I do this is I, Come down here, select the layer, and I change the layer type to multiply. Mm -hmm. Now what's happened is the all the white in that image has become transparent. We're all levels of white. So it's picking up the white of this canvas, okay? So now it looks like I have an actual painting hanging there on the wall. So I use, let's say it's my digital image of my artwork, but I've now made an actual virtual product. Okay, so this is what I mean by creating a product, uh, okay, that, uh, that sells, that looks tangible, okay? Now you could always, you know, if you have an original painting and you have a nice setting, and uh, you want to photograph it, by all means do so. In some cases, you'll find that's probably easier. Um, some cases, maybe not. Maybe you don't have the original work anymore. But you know, the, the idea is to 
present to the potential buyer uh, something that is tangible, dimensional, not so abstract as an image that's that's on their screen. Uh, uh, give it a sense of value. Okay, so uh, th there is just kind of real quick, uh, you know, what if your image is, doesn't quite fit this, uh, you know, doesn't have all that, that, that white background? Well, we can, what you would have to do in that case, let's see if I can find one real quick. Might have to kind of search around here. And I know one question we tend to get uh, with mock-up um, examples, because uh, uh, Shutterstock is uh, the paid service. If there's uh, free places as well, and and there is, I think there's uh, Unsplash. We'll let you grab some um, on there. And again, those are they're they're good for uh, so like social kind of online rather than anything that you would put in a brochure. They're not print ready, but they're great for any kind of um, online use you want to use. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so it doesn't have to cost you a whole lot of money. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's, you know, th that investment is worth it, you know. Mm -hmm. So just, uh, you know, keep that in mind. So this is, this is a, a little bit more difficult because if I just come over here and I select multiply, you know, that's what you get. And doesn't, it doesn't, it looks like an image that's been transposed on another image. Uh, in this case, what I want to do is I want it to actually look as, as, as if it's part of that, the artwork. Now, uh, it's probably not the ideally com composed uh, or the original composition of the image is not ideal for this size, but, you know, that's, you know, Different aspect ratios. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, some people might say, hey, that looks perfectly fine. Uh, but anyway, uh, regardless, the point is here, th there's some things that you can do. Okay. Uh, one I can do is I can select the uh, regular marquee, marquee tool up here and I can just select it, select the area. I can kind of see the outline of the canvas. And if they canvas, and I'll, believe it or not, a lot of these images that you see, these mock-ups are computer generated. They're not actually photographs. Mm -hmm. So this was like some someone with 3D rendering software that created this fake uh, uh, background, Background, this fake Christmas tree, these fake stars. It's, it's actually a, a computer rendering. It's not real. But uh, one of the advantages I found with these is that they, they tend to, when they put these like canvases and things like that, they they make these canvases, I mean, they're straight as can be. So a lot of times you can select the whole thing just with the marquee tool. So after I do that, I've, after I've selected, I'm now gonna just come down here and I'm gonna select the masking tool. Uh, oops, I'm sorry, that was the wrong tool. I'm gonna select the layer, then I'm gonna select the masking tool right here. And there's running slow and boom, there you go. And it, it now could have used a little bit of tweaking. I could have zoomed in and probably done that better. If the canvas is not perfectly straight, you could always use the uh, uh, polygonal lasso, lasso tool. And you can, you could, of course, you know, select what you need to select with this until you select the entire canvas. Um, and then, then apply that that mask effect. Um, uh, there's different ways that you can select images, and uh, you know you you can spend a lot of time with it. Uh, it, it can be uh, a little fun sometimes, um, but anyway. But that's a general sense of how you would do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing because uh, that that's a, one of the ways that you can. Uh, create uh, mock-ups without actually having to take photographs of the, of the original artwork. And again, Christmas themed, holiday themed, okay? Um, uh, I know of artists that do this. Uh, they spend a lot of time and, and effort doing this, but they'll have their, their holiday themed images 
uh, a library of holiday themed images or product images, and then they have their library of, you know, just their standard images. Mm -hmm. So and they swap them out on their website, you know, um, during certain times of year. Um, I've, Noel does a good, I guess it's a good job with Honeycomb Proverbs um, that uh, way. I, I know a guy that he's, he's an artist, but he's also a computer programmer. He built his own website. Well, he has it set to automatically update oh, wow. graphics, you know, uh, or, or display certain graphics during certain times of the year uh, in the backend code. So, uh, which is kind of cool. So he doesn't yeah. have to deal with it anymore. So, uh, but uh, yeah, that's kind of a, a, a nice, nice thing that you can do. Uh, 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 some final words, uh, make sure that uh, if you're selling online, selling via social media, email, that you clearly state, uh, you know, uh, your terms of service. Um, you should have a terms of service page if you have a website, but uh, you, you want to manage your uh, buyer's expectations during the holiday season. Let them know that, uh, you know, uh, you know, create holiday deadlines, post them online so people know, you know, when they can order. Let them know you're still taking orders after the ho holiday season. Don't, don't let people think that you are just only taking orders during the holiday season. Encourage people to buy even after they've, they've uh, gone past your deadline. Okay, just let them know, say, hey, you know, uh, you can still buy, you know, item, you know, I'll do my best to get, you know, X, you know, product X to you before Christmas, but I, I can't guarantee it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, or just plainly state, you know, I'm, you know, I expect, you know, you probably won't get it till, uh, you know, after Christmas. Um, so, but but make that clear. Put it in your product description. Put it, you know, when a person first comes to your website and, you know, like a little screen pops up if you have to. Um, yeah, just don't, don't give people the impression that they are going to get something for Christmas because if they're buying it as a Christmas gift, uh, then they want to be able to, they want to have, in many cases, have the pleasure of being able to present that to to their friend, family member themselves during Christmas. So um, I th think that's all I have. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? I think I have a, no, I um, haven't seen any questions yet pop up here or on our uh, chat. Like I said, and if you have any questions, if you're watching on the replay, please stick them in the comment section on YouTube and we will do our best to get back to you on those. Um, I don't know if you want to give me back coast. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, where's the make coast button? There we go. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I am now hosting. Um, I just want, I, like I said, thanks a lot, James, for kind of giving a, a bunch of uh, details there for, because, like I said, you're coming from a business owner uh, background, and that's, <clears throat> really what every artist and every photographer needs to remember they are entrepreneurs they are business people um so to get advice from a peer is, is always uh some of the best uh, advice you can get because they they know where you're coming from uh i think i'm just going to take really quick just to make sure on my notes that we covered a lot of stuff um so like i said we clean up your sales platforms the social media uh, sales strategies were kind of like know your dates um, that are coming up in fourth quarter. These are some of the holidays. Know them <laughs> in relation to, um, you know, there might be uh, no mail on certain dates. Thanksgiving for one's Veterans Day. Um, also know that the, you know, big sale dates like Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Uh, kind of look around here. He says like uh, for our our final works, and as James is mentioning, those are going to be out actually probably about the first week of November, so they'll be out a little earlier. And then uh, you'll start to see the deadlines uh, that'll be starting in December. So make sure that you note those. Um, okay, we talked about preparing for shipping delays, and uh, as we get into those, um, 
as we get into December, and if you are having uh, some items that need to go up, be sure to get into your Final Works account and go to your orders and, and see the where they are, what the order status is. If there is something that needed to get out, you can always contact customer care at Final Works and with your order number, let them know. Uh, I, I gotta say it for our staff, they go above and beyond a lot of times getting stuff out. So, because uh, we are trying, uh, check your spam folder, uh, folder for delay notices because those are gonna be a, a customer service I'm trying to get to you. So, you know, if you don't see anything, just check that spam folder. Uh, see, we already went through all of that. Again, add value to, during uh, Christmas thing to your stuff. Uh, you know, if you want to give uh, visitors gift ideas, as James was saying, with a mock-up, kind of create that ambiance, that emotional buy. Um, if you want to do the uh, gift cards, especially towards the end, that's another good way of getting there. Create the urgency with those shipping deadlines. You can offer pre-Christmas uh, discounts. Sometimes those are great when you want to do pre-orders uh, to make sure that they get there on time. Uh, remember, we talked about the emails. You can create gift bundles and offer free delivery. And as we were talking about that earlier, just kind of go into your uh, the pricing to kind of do that. We talked about um, the free delivery. We went through all of these. So this was um, glad we had these. Uh, I would say right now, guys, if you can review your sales uh, from this year and see if there was a discount that really resonated, uh, that went really well, because that might be something you want to go ahead and start your fourth quarter sales off with and, and see if you can push that. Um, what else in here? Also during this time in September, what you might want to look at is customized inventory. Um, it, it sells well. I, I think um, Honeycomb Proverbs, uh, which Noelle does uh, through us, is uh, a lot of the stuff that she says it's customized with the wedding date, a uh, couple song or whatever, those tend to sell but they take a lot more work because you got to create, um, make sure everything's right, send a, a kind of a copy so that they can approve it. It takes time. So there's a lot more um, back and forth there. So you want to make sure you maybe do that one proof and done kind of thing, but uh, kind of look at your timetable and see if you can do something like maybe placing your art in a certain way and leaving a template with a, um, a white out person art where you could put in like a person's name so that you could do a personalized print for somebody. Uh, so if you want to try that right now, sometimes fourth quarter is the best time to see that because people like personalized stuff. Um, look at our specialty items. If you haven't tried before, if you've only been doing prints and canvas, you know, maybe this for the holiday season, you might want to try pillows, um, uh, the, the mugs, uh, things like that. Those are pretty uh, nice to have there. I wouldn't mark them up too high. I'd actually, you know, you want to see a sell in quantity on those. Uh, look at your in-house inventory. You guys, if you've had canceled shows and you have stacks of prints right now, get those prepared and, and kind of featured for some uh, sales so that you can go ahead and get them uh, out. Uh, also, if you haven't tried before cards, holiday theme card sets, um, those are pretty popular as well. And if you have holiday themed art, and I'm talking about Halloween, uh, like I said, we have Veterans Day. If you have those, uh, you know, patriotic looking art, those are some of the fourth quarter sales that you want to look at to uh, pushing those. And um, and I'm just remember that uh, kind of your paper and canvas prints are always going to be pretty much your um, the best ones that you can do for markups on there. You got you got the best leeway on your paper prints and your canvases on doing markup prices. So I think that was all I had on there. It looks like we covered a lot in there. So <laughs> um, anything you want to say in closing? Yeah. No, I, I, I think, uh, I think that's it. Uh, we, I, I do know that next, next month we, we hope to have a guest speaker if we can, we, we, we we're hoping this month uh, it was going to be our uh, uh, Hannah Mule representative, but uh, we're going to try for next month. And actually, it's probably good that we we started on this topic uh, now uh, versus waiting to the uh, uh, waiting until the 
till uh, the early part of October. So, um, so okay. no, I, I, I guess I think that's it for now. Okay. Yeah. So kind of watch on our social, and we'll have that um, our October first Tuesday uh, peg down. We'll be announcing it there. But also, if you want, like I said, ca- not only catch this on the replay and other uh, first Tuesdays that we've had, but you can also catch uh, Photo Tips Monthly with Jim Landers on there. And any questions yeah. you guys have, you can uh, put them on there. Or if you want to, either through our social or if you'd like to send Melissa at finerworks.com uh, questions, and I will be glad to have James or I answer them. Um, you know, we, we look forward to that. And if y'all uh, like this a lot, go ahead. If you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe and notify. That'll give you a notice uh, when we go live and any of our uh other videos that we have that are tutorial or showing new products. So that way you are constantly informed visually uh, there. And we appreciate you guys uh, joining in this. And thank you. We got about over a thousand subscribers now on, on YouTube. And that's kind of rare for a lot of print companies. So we really appreciate you guys uh, following us on our social. So y'all have a great day. Go ahead. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks again. And uh, we'll catch y'all in October. All right.